Okay, this one's going to be a tough one for you to understand. Let's discuss something that is in the second edition of the book, Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism, and that I had fully planned on expanding immensely in the third and fourth edition. So, let's dismiss the notion that there is any such thing as magnetic attraction. Well, now you're thinking to yourself, well, you're just crazy. You're just so insane. I mean, that's the most absurd thing I've ever heard in my life. Here we have a ring magnet. Okay. Here we have a little copper-coated steel ball. Hold on, we'll get to the good part here in a second, okay? Here we have another little steel ball. Oh, look, that's magnetic attraction. What do you mean magnetism doesn't attract things? Magnetism is radiation is discharge. Magnetism has never attracted anything. I know, it still sounds insane, right? Well, follow me for just a couple more minutes and then we'll get to the good part. Where logic, common sense, and platonic retroduction come into play. That's how all those ancient people long time ago were able to deduce things and figure out things that we still cannot grasp and understand. It's called platonic retroduction. Via negativa, rapophasis. Deduction, induction, retroduction. Okay, here we have a ring magnet, right? Here we have a dielectric inertial plane. So we have north pole here, south pole here. Doesn't really matter which. This one's about to break. We have a stress fracture right here, okay? So, you're saying, well, you keep saying there's no such thing as magnetic attraction. Trust me, I'll get to the good part in just a second. Here we can see magnetic attraction to these little steel balls. That's magnetic attraction. What happens in ferrous objects, either diamagnetic or paramagnetic, of course, here we have ferrous. Here we have uh, magnetic attraction, quote unquote. What is happening in the interatomic magnetodielectricity of everything that is variously attracted to a magnet is dielectric coherency. It's little steel ball, comes close to a quote unquote magnet, jumps to it. Right? Yes, we all understand that fact. Yes. Bear with me one second and we'll get to the good part, okay? And you'll have some comprehension about what is going on, okay? Imagine you have all of these dielectric inertial planes and the millions and millions of little atoms, trillions, of your steel or your ferrous object that is jumping to the magnet. It's not jumping to magnetism. Magnetism displaces things. It does not attract anything. What you have is dielectric coherency. So here we have two dielectric inertial planes, two atoms, under magnetic induction. Obviously what is reaching out to the steel ball is not dielectricity. Dielectricity is centripetal counterspatial, right? What is reaching out spatially, polarization, is magnetism, obviously and logically so. That is correct. However, magnetism does not attract anything. What happens is magnetism causes dielectric coherency and inner atomic of ferrous objects that cause them to accelerate towards a quote-unquote magnet. So here we have two dielectric inertial planes, two atoms, <whistles> dielectric coherency, acceleration towards the magnet. Remember we showed you the magnet? <laughs> where the dielectric inertial planes were in the two poles a second ago on this ring magnet. North pole, south pole, doesn't matter which. Here you can see it, All right? Now let's take a look at another ring magnet. I told you we'd let you understand here in a second. Well, this is together. How come you got it marked differently? I can see it looks like it's cracked. This side is marked the same as the other side. Well, it's back together again. I mean, I see that it all fits. So why is one side marked with hashtags and the other side, one half of it's marked with hashtags? Well, it's not back together again. It kind of looks like a circle, doesn't it? Well, it's not. Let's take a look. Oh, look. So here we have North Pole, South Pole. South Pole, North Pole. You see that? You see this crosshatch pattern? Dielectricity folds magnets, not magnetism. This is a broken magnet. This side, before it broke and flipped itself due to dielectric voidance. Dielectricity is interested in folding matter and space. It is interested in flushing space, okay? Magnetism is spatial, it is radiation, it is discharge. Dielectricity is counterspatial, it is radial. Let's take a look at a little disc magnet. That used to be a disc magnet. This 
used to look like this. And if you keep breaking this, it will eventually, obviously it's harder and harder to do, it will make a sphere. It will make a perfect little, little round sphere. Oh, this is starting to make a little bit of sense here. Here's our little steel ring. How come it took me less than a second to set that up? This is under magnetic induction, but what is occurring to cause acceleration of this steel ring to this disk magnet is dielectric coherency. You see how it's sitting perpendicular? Magnet, steel ring, perpendicular, correct? Nothing has been increased here, it has only been made coherent. There is no dielectric capacitance increase, only magnetic induction which is not magnetism, which is not attraction, what is reaching out to this steel ring obviously is magnetism, but what is occurring is dielectric coherency. Imagine lots of little atoms like this, are dielectric inertial planes, all made coherent, accelerating towards the quote-unquote magnet, which is a dielectric object. Right? Right. Here's a little hard drive magnet. I'm sure everybody has those. Like I said, if you keep breaking these, it will eventually form a perfect little sphere to the best of its ability. Just keep breaking it. This is how dielectricity forms matter, mass, and galactic formations and stellar formations. Obviously not from this, but that's the principle. This wants to form the smallest spatial object possible. Not due to magnetism. Well, somebody says, well, when you break a magnet, you know, the other side flips to the other side, that's magnetic attraction. No, it isn't. It's dielectric counterspatial voidance. This is the conjugate nature of magnetodielectricity. Let's take a look at two identical ring magnets again. You see this? There's our dielectric inertial plane. It's even all the way around. One side's one pole, the other side's the other. What does polarization mean? What is happening? There's no such thing as magnetic attraction. Oh, honey, come watch this video. There's some crazy guy on YouTube that says there's no such thing as magnetic attraction. That's right, dear. That is not magnetic attraction. What is reaching out spatially to this steel disk and causing acceleration is magnetism. But what is happening is dielectric coherency and acceleration of the ferrous object to the magnet. But the magnet isn't a magnet. We call it a magnet because its spatial properties are magnetic polarization, the radiation. Human beings are like little children watching a puppet show. They see the little puppets moving and dancing. Magnetism is just like that. What they don't see is the puppet master behind the curtain pulling the strings. Well, folks, dielectricity is the puppet master, is the giant guy behind the curtains that's controlling the spatial puppets. As an analogy, obviously. So, let's take a look at our ring magnets, both identical. Dielectric inertial plane, even all around, right? Same ring magnet, broken. If I keep breaking it, it will keep folding to form a perfect sphere. If I keep smashing it and breaking it, it will form a nice little ball. It will be a sharp, jagged little ball, but that's what it will form. Here we have here. Let's roll around to our breaking point. You'll see it. Ah, oh, you see there? There we go. Here we have four poles meeting in a perfect cross. Let's understand this. If you understand, if you don't understand this, you understand nothing, nothing about magnetism. You see that cross? You see that meeting point? That X? X marks the spot. Marks the spot of what? Dielectric voidance. Centripetal. Counterspatial. The flushing of space. Here where it isn't broken. Let's keep rolling around to our breaking point. Here we have four quote unquote poles meeting. Remember, this side used to be over here. This is not how it was before it broke. It was over here, but now it won't come together this way. Well, why is that? That's how it was when it was made. Dielectricity folds, terminates the space. Now it only wants to sit opposite to how it was created. Why? People say, well, if we take these two halves and put them together, that's magnetic attraction. Now we have two poles meeting. 
That's not what is happening. What is happening is the folding of space. It is the desire, for lack of a better word, it is the modality of ether. The most primordial attribute of ether is dielectricity. Remember, electricity is phi times psi equals Q and Planck electrification. Electricity terminates as magnetism by discharging its dielectric component. Remember, electricity is a combination of two things. It's a hybrid. Electricity, everything we have is running off of electricity. But what we don't know is electricity is the combination of two ether modalities creating a hybrid of electricity. Dielectricity, counterspatial, radial, centripetal. Dielectricity is charge. Magnetism is discharge. So, we know magnetism is polarized. What does polarization mean? It means radiation. It means the creation of space. If you understand, if you don't understand this, you understand nothing. See that crossing point? That is where dielectricity has, due to one break, done its desired attribute of what it is. This ether modality of dielectricity folds space. If I keep breaking it and keep breaking it and keep breaking it, it will eventually form a nice little sphere. Here we have four breaks. Keep breaking it, keep breaking it. Dielectricity will fold what was originally a flat hard drive magnet or any magnet. Remember this used to be a disc magnet. This is flattened out. It's spatially flattened out. It was created like this. Capacitor banks to discharge coils, increase dielectric capacitance. Dielectricity is running the show, folks. It is the puppet master behind the puppet that everybody sees only magnetism. They do not see dielectricity. What is going on in quote-unquote magnetic attraction is not magnetism. What is reaching out spatially to ferrous objects, like this steel ring, obviously, is the radiation, is the magnetism. But what it is doing, it is causing dielectric coherency in the inner atomic where there is no increase in capacitance of the dielectricity in the ferrous object, only coherency. Imagine two atoms in our steel ring. They're all crossed, they're all going various which ways. Same thing as the quote unquote magnet before it is created or created through induction. The magnetic field displaces. Magnetism attracts nothing. Get that through your head. Magnetism attracts nothing. Dielectricity is counterspatial. Magnetism displaces. Remember our uh, diagram from our book? In a perfect magnet, magnetism is a double hyperbola, the max inverse throw of a sphere, and along the middle is our dielectric inertial plane. It is not located there in the middle. It is displaced there. It is forced there, the same way fluid dynamics works. That little thin line is the dielectric inertial plane. It is forced there because magnetism, max throw, double hyperbola, inertial plane, counterspatial, dielectricity, along the center. Not located at, forced at, concentrated at, just like jumping in a bathtub and displacing water. Dielectricity and magnetism move opposite from each other. Yes, folks, there is no such thing as magnetic attraction. What you are seeing reaching out into space is magnetism. What happens, however, is dielectric coherency. Steel ring, reaching out magnetism, dielectric coherency. So, yes, I'm being slightly redundant now. I have to get it through your heads because thousands and thousands of years now we've all thought of only one thing. Magnetic attraction due to lodestones. Well, look, you know, we have a lodestone or magnet or a permanent magnet. You know, here's magnetic attraction. There is no such thing as magnetic attraction. What is reaching out into space is magnetism. What is happening is dielectric coherency. What is happening in this magnet, when it was created, is an increase in dielectric capacitance from discharging coils. That is why these are so powerful. The second part of which is the hexagonal lattice nature of the neodymium iron boron. So, why does a steel disc, I show this only takes two seconds to set up. See that? 
This is a razor thin little disc, little steel disc, steel ring. Look, it took me only a couple seconds to set that up. Why is this magnet only sitting parallel with the other magnet? Dielectricity, the folding of space. Why is this steel ring sitting perpendicular to the dielectric inertial plane? Because it is under magnetic induction, which is called dielectric coherency. It is does no increase in dielectric capacitance, only coherency of its dielectricity in the inner atomic. There's no such thing as 99.99% space inside the inner atomic of any atom. It is buzzing and full of magnetodielectricity. Okay. Both of these have increase in dielectric capacitance. That's why this will not let you torque it perpendicular to the other magnet. Ring magnet, disc magnet. Steel ring, why does it sit perpendicular? Why can I not twist it? It will go to either side, but you'll notice as I do this, it will not because it is under the magnetic field of induction. It has dielectric coherency. It is magnetically induced right now, but it will not rest as you see as I wave it across the dielectric inertial plane. Watch it move. I have to hold it loosely so you can see it. You see that? No. Either side, yes. Magnetic induction. Dielectric capacitance. Counterspatial. Right. No such thing as magnetic attraction. Still think I'm crazy? Prove me wrong. My premise explains all observed phenomena. Period. All. My premise is backed by Tesla, Faraday, Steinmetz, Oliver Heaviside, although they didn't draw these conclusions. My research is based upon the masters that gave you all the electricity that you're using right now in your house, your lights, your computer, everything. Go back to James Clerk Maxwell and look at his uh, magnetodielectric AC current. Dielectricity is counterspatial, it is centripetal. Magnets do not fold when they are broken due to magnetism. They fold due to dielectricity. Magnetism does not attract anything. Nothing. It displaces. Magnetism causes the magnetodielectric geometry of our neodymium iron boron or even our ferrite because it's the double hyperbola polarized sections of magnetism which is the radiation, the discharge the discharge of dielectricity. These are created by increase of dielectric capacitance. Not sheer coherency. What is reaching out to this iron obviously is magnetism. The resultant effect is dielectric coherency in the steel, the iron, the iron dust, the nails, whatever is jumping to your magnet. That is not magnetic attraction. You can say what is reaching out to the iron of the steel discs is magnetism, but that doesn't mean it is magnetic attraction. It is dielectric voidance because there's not one atom in this entire universe between its nucleus and its outside radius in picometers that is not full, absolutely full of magnetodielectricity. So where do we get electrical charge from? Electricity, combination, crossing points, of magnetism and dielectricity. Magnetism is a hybrid. The most fundamental ether modality in the universe is dielectricity. You see this crossing point? This is one break and here's the crossing point. This is dielectricity due to the increased dielectric capacitance of this neodymium iron boron to fold this spatial object. It is trying to fold it into the smallest spatial object possible. The same thing will happen to it if I keep breaking it as this disk magnet or the, any hard drive magnet. I've got, I've broken so many hard drive magnets on accident over the many years. I mean, it's not even funny. So if you understand that, then you will understand a lot. Obviously, ceramics are fragile. Breaking a ceramic is easy, but what causes them to keep folding and folding into more and more and more and more preponderances of what looks like a sphere has nothing to do with magnetism.
It has to do with dielectricity being counterspatial in nature because these have increased dielectric capacitance in their creation. Okay, if you understand that, then you will really understand magnetism. If you tell somebody what you understood, what you just watched, they will call you crazy. Why? Because we have now probably six, seven, eight thousand, who knows how many thousands of years of humankind playing with lodestones and thinking that there is such a thing as magnetic attraction. Doesn't exist. Does not exist at all. Magnetism displaces. Magnetism causes dielectric coherency in non-magnetized ferrous objects. But even magnetized objects are magnetized only resulting to dielectric coherency. What is reaching out is magnetism. What is happening in the ferrous object is dielectric coherency. If you understand this, you will understand a lot. Why does it only take me two seconds to put this razor-thin steel ring perpendicular to this magnet? Why? Just the inverse of our disk magnet. Parallel. Dielectricity, this is the smallest counterspatial vector, or sitting on either side of the magnet, flush with it, like this. Of course, this is a ring magnet, so it does not want to sit flush right there. Fields are reciprocating through the hole. If it were a disk magnet, obviously it would be sitting flush. But, magnetic induction. There's no increase in dielectric capacitance on this ring. Only magnetic induction, therefore only dielectric coherency, but not an increase in dielectric capacitance in the steel ring. Do we understand now? Yes, if you tell anybody this, they will call you crazy. This is logical. This is how the Platonists and the Pythagoreans and the Egyptians figured stuff out long ago. We aren't taught this sort of stuff in school. We're not taught about retroduction, using retroductive methodology to figure out really abstruse things, especially when it comes to the counterspatial things. Well, what does counterspatial mean? Well, that would obviously take a really long video to get into that one. It's unfortunate that I broke this ring magnet, but it makes a perfect little demonstration video, especially considering they're quite expensive. The larger ones like this are. What is the difference between deduction, induction, and retroduction? Well, that's a good question. Deduction would be like looking for a needle in a haystack. Someone saw it somewhere located in the haystack, so you're looking over it for there. Induction is working out the properties of a needle. Well, it probably fell this far and it went that far. Retroduction is the quickest methodology, and this was Tesla's methodology, because if you watch Nikola Tesla, you will see he has one hand on his head and his other hand on his Bible, his Bible. It's uh, Rudyard Boscovich's theory of natural philosophy. So what is so special about retroduction? Retroduction takes wisdom. It is understanding that a needle is made out of metal. It does not burn, the hay does. It's setting a match to the whole pile. Poof! Two seconds later, there's the needle. Someone once said, well, that analogy doesn't work, you know. There used to be bone needles, and if you set a match to the whole thing, then, well, you know, then the whole thing would go up, including the bone needle. Well, same thing still applies in retroduction. If you know the needle is bone, and bone floats and hay doesn't, then all you have to do is just throw the whole lot into water and here you will have the needle sitting on top of the water. So if it's metal, you just let it match the whole thing, boom, there's it. It's about getting quick results and a comprehensional understanding. The elimination of everything else which you know it is not will leave you with what it is. Via negativa, apophasis, retroduction. This is the lost secret of the Pythagoreans. It is also the if te Nikola Tesla all his photos are extremely staged. Shows you, with his one hand, his left hand on his head, and his other hand sitting on his book. What book is that? That is Roger Boscovich's Theory of Natural Philosophy. Roger Boscovich got his ideas from the Periphasian. The Periphasian goes back to Plotinus. Plotinus goes back to Plato. Plato goes back to Pythagoras. It is a lost art a methodology of figuring things out. I'm not saying Nikola Tesla wasn't extremely intelligent and bright, 
But you too can do the same stuff he did by rediscovering lost methodologies, stuff, dusty old stuff that's really hard, or you're not taught in school. Rudra Boscovich's theory of natural philosophy was Tesla's quote-unquote intellectual Bible. If you're interested in Tesla, if you go to any Nikola Tesla site, you will not find any mention of this. Everybody's seen the picture of Nikola Tesla. He's got his right hand on the book and his other hand on his head. Nikola Tesla is telling you something, kiddies, but you aren't listening. You aren't listening to Nikola Tesla. You look at his patents and his invention and all his writings, but his most staged photo ever, he has his hand on a book. That book is Roger Boscovich's Theory of Natural Philosophy. Remember, there's no such thing as magnetic attraction. Now, if you tell anybody this, they'll call you insane. But now you understand why. Logically, reasonably, deductively, retroductively, explains all observed phenomena, period, without exception. Period. There are no exceptions to this. Dielectricity is counterspatial. It wants to take this and fold it into a tight little sphere. The only thing that gives massiveness to matter in the entire universe is magnetism. Dielectricity is the opposite to this. Dielectricity is charge. Magnetism, as Faraday called it, the dielectric field, is discharge. You see the break here? Let's take a look at the face of our magnet. You'll see the break here. You can see we have two poles here. Now look where we have our dielectric inertial plane. We have our cross here, and look here. Now let's take a look at the unbroken ring magnet, which is about to break because it has a stress fracture. See? None of that. That's right. That's right. This. Both of the same ring magnets. One just broke and dielectricity folded it. That's right. Dielectricity. Counterspatial. There will be a new revolution coming. And all this quantum bullshit, excuse my language, will be out the door. We will go back to the logical principles of Tesla, Faraday, Steinmetz, Oliver Heaviside, James Clerk Maxwell, and we will rediscover the ether modalities of the universe and we'll rediscover dielectricity. This is nature's most primitive form. Electricity is a combination of magnetism and dielectricity. It's a hybrid, okay? Dielectricity is first. First. Magnetism, second. Electricity is the hybrid of both. Thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of this. Just don't show this, don't tell this to anybody else because they will call you crazy. But now you know it's true. Now you know it's logical. Now you know how a magnet works. Or if you didn't, then you'll just have to watch another video and I'll have to explain it further or send me an email. Thanks for watching. Working hard on the third edition.